Welcome back to Quick Take Charge. I'm Tim Stenovec in New York. And now to some new numbers from Pfizer. The vaccine maker says its two-dose shot regimen was 100% effective in a final stage trial in kids ages 12 to 15. Dr. Amish Adalja is senior scholar at the Johns Hopkins Center for Health Security and joins me now with more. Dr. Adalja, great to see you this morning. Does it get any better than this 100% effective in this late stage trial? No, these are really uh, exciting results, and I do think it paves the way to get older children vaccinated. And, and this is going to be something that makes all of these decisions about sports and schools and play dates much, much easier to, to make when we can get all these children vaccinated. So take us through the timeline here. Now that Pfizer has shared this late stage data with the public, what comes next? What has to happen now is Pfizer will take that data and then submit to the FDA for an emergency use authorization. From the press releases today, it seems like they're going to do that in a matter of weeks. Then the FDA will convene an advisory board meeting where they will go over that data and then vote on a recommendation, which then the FDA commissioner or the acting commissioner will decide whether or not uh, to accept. And then that goes to the CDC and the Advisory Committee on Immunization Practices. And then you get basically this vaccine going into 12 to 16 year olds. So I think we're still talking about a couple of months probably before this actually rolls out. Hopefully they move faster uh, because I know that people are very anxious to have children vaccinated, especially as schools are opening, especially as summer camps are going to be opening. Uh, all of that's gonna make it much, much easier when we have this vaccine uh, being available to children. 12 to 15 is certainly a really important group when it comes to inoculating them, but, but what about younger kids uh, as well? Where are we when it comes to clinical trials for kids under the age of 12? Those, those uh, studies are enrolling right now, both Moderna and Pfizer, as well as other companies have children, pediatric tr uh, trials going on. It's going to take probably several weeks to months to start to get that data. And remember, there's a different risk benefit calculation you have to make in each age group. So adults are one thing, older children are another, and younger children are another, because you have to make sure that they're going to gain a, a great benefit from this vaccine and that the risks in terms of side effects are going to be acceptable. So that's why it's important that we get data on this group of six months of age to 12 years of age before we just give it to those children. But hopefully this will be something that uh, occurs over the next several months. And some data we're seeing in a 12 year old and up age group, I do think we'll probably get a positive result in that younger age group, but we wanna see the data to be sure. Dr. Adalja, I, I keep thinking back to this 100% figure. It, it, it really, is impossible for anything to be more than 100%. Is that number, does it make you at all skeptical? Does there need to be a, a larger trial? Is Can anything actually be 100% effective? Well, I think you have to remember that when you do a trial, there's lots of statistical tests and they have confidence intervals. And this was, I think, about 2,000 children and just really underscores the fact that these vaccines are extraordinary when it comes to their ability to protect against coronavirus. So I do think it's in the realm of possibility in a clinical trial setting that you have 100%. When you roll it into the, the real world, that may drop a little bit, but we've seen even with the, with the older age group, the Pfizer vaccine, it still holds up basically around what you would expect from the clinical trial. So I do think that you know 100% is often something we tell people is not something to expect from a vaccine. And in a clinical trial setting, maybe you can achieve 100%. I suspect it's probably close to 100% in, in the real world. But obviously, I think it's important to, to remember that no vaccine makes you completely impervious, that, there's, that you shouldn't expect that from a vaccine. But these come very close to it. Hey, Dr. Adalja, I want to end just talking about the rise in cases but decline in hospitalizations that we're seeing here in the United States right now. This is something that you've talked about for, for quite a while, and anyone who follows you on Twitter sees you talking about this. What do we, what do we have to think about when we look at this data, that, that cases are going up, but hospitalizations are going down? Because on the one hand, it, it is scary because hospitalizations are a lagging indicator, right? You find out that you have COVID and then maybe you need to go to the hospital a few days or even a few weeks later. How are you thinking about these numbers? Well, you have to remember that things have changed, that when you see surges, when you've seen surges in the past, they always were accompanied several weeks later with a rise in hospitalizations and deaths and worries about hospital capacity. But something has changed, and that's the vaccine. And if you look at the way we've prioritized the vaccine to nursing home residents, 
community dwelling high risk individuals. Those are the people that were taking up hospital beds. Those are the ones that were dying. That's where our hospital capacity concerns come, came from. And as we get more vaccine into those priority groups, you're basically changing this virus. You are basically removing its ability to cause serious disease, hospitalization, and death. So I think the cases are going to continue to increase. They're going to be something that's out there in the community, but they're increasingly going to be decoupled from hospitalization or hospital capacity concerns. And that's sort of where we want to be. And it's not surprising that cases are going up in younger populations because they're not able to get the vaccine. So until we start vaccinating those younger individuals, we're still going to see cases go up. But this time, with this surge in cases, they're not necessarily going to translate into hospital capacity concerns. Definitely people are going to get hospitalized. We have seen some hospitals, hospitalizations uptick in Michigan and New Jersey. But I don't think that they're anywhere near where we saw during prior surges. And that's because of the power of this vaccine. So I think we're increasingly going to have to less, lessen our focus on the number of cases and continue to keep our eye on hospital capacity as this becomes a much more manageable respiratory virus. Dr. Amish Adalja, Senior Scholar at the Johns Hopkins Center for Health Security. It is always great when you join us. Thank you so much for taking the time, Dr. Adalja.